Well, the world's deep oceans are in deep trouble. This according to a new report presented at the UN Climate Conference in Madrid today. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature says there are many reasons for that, but a big one is the steady fall in oxygen levels. Now, fish need oxygen just as much as land animals, but the number of so-called dead zones, uh, which are places with little or no oxygen, is growing quickly. When research began in the 1960s, scientists counted 45 dead zones, but today there are more than 700. The lower oxygen levels are especially hard on larger species, like sharks. Well, Minna Epps is the director of the Global Marine and Polar Program with the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, and she joins us right now from Madrid. Uh, Minna, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Listen, I want to begin first and foremost with impact. What does a lower oxygen level in oceans actually translate to? Well, the, the concrete things that it translates to um, on, on a general scale would be the loss of biodiversity, loss of biomass, uh, lots of habitats as these are shrinking, or um, it could be also um, alternate of alter, alteration of the energy and the biochemical uh, cycling. So what is causing this lower oxygen level that's now being tracked around the world? Well, the primary cause of o I mean, deoxygenation, um, which has occurred far most in the coastal areas, which have been 30 to 40 kilometers offshore, like you would have seen in, in the lower the Gulf or St. Lawrence. Um, that is caused mainly by nutrient pollution. So that's the primary cause in general. What we're seeing now is also the linkages to climate change as um, increased CO2 levels mission has resulted in ocean warming. So warmer water uh, contains less, uh, less oxygen, which means that the oceans due to climate change are becoming warmer, more sour, and ultimately breathless breathless but i do wonder what is the impact on that on humans well it's it's, it's all connected so from the oceans it, it, you know we get more food it's 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 a carbon storage it generates oxygen it's part of it regulates, uh, absorbs the heat the excess heat so it's part of a regulatory system and we all need oxygen as well to breathe but what climate change does is weaken this ability the support system of of the ocean and you mentioned uh, the 700 sites. I mean, the, this 2% decline in oxygen uh, levels is an average. Within that, you have mass, huge uh, regional variations. So this could be, um, in some areas, up to 30%, etc. Um, but we're also seeing that the future projections is another 3 to 4%, both under high and a lower emission targets. So it makes it harder to actually regulate oxygen and, and uh, global temperature, as you're saying. And talk about the economic impact of this, because I think for many people, uh, this mm -hmm. is part of the picture as they try to understand the impacts of climate change. Yeah, so I think that now they're talking about or looking at the ocean saying, well, if the ocean was uh, a state, it would be, and in terms of GDP, it would be the seven largest. So because we're looking at all the benefits that we are getting for the ocean and its services and the potential that's there. So we really need to think about this. And a concrete thing would be um, commercial fishing, which is important for the socioeconomic. So look at the tuna fisheries, for example. They need a lot of oxygen-rich waters. Um, so we're seeing migration to more um, nutrient and oxygen-rich waters. But so it's, it could be habitat loss, but it can also affect us in the way that um, important commercial species, which is like cod, for example, it can actually hamper their growth as well because they don't have uh, oxygen, enough oxygen. Um, they have enough to sustain, but they might not grow or reproduce as much as they would under more optimal conditions. Mm -hmm. well, of course, cod is a species of fish that Kant is very familiar with. Uh, this deoxygenation, as you say, happening all the, around the world. Can you pinpoint the kind of effect this will have on Canada in particular? Well, I mean, this uh, report that's been put together is from 67 scientists around the world, um, and there's different geographical studies. So it's a, a 600 pages of these different sites. There are studies looking at um, the Gulf of St. Lawrence and looking at cod, but also in some areas where they have actually found um, deoxygenation um, has half since the 1930s in those areas. So it's an area of, I think, 1,300 square kilometers of deoxygenation. Um, so, so that's something that's 
very close to home for you and as you mentioned before the the cod fisheries mm -hmm. so can this be stopped uh, are there things on a practical level that people can do to stop this from happening i mean there is there is a solution um i mean the primary cause which is nutrient pollution of course there's actions that can be taken there but we need to ultimately cut emissions uh, or have much more ambitious targets towards uh, cutting emissions. We need to invest in nature-based solutions. So, so that's in protecting and restoring ecosystems, uh, both for mitigation and for adaptation. But we also need to reduce other uh, non-climate change stressors, such as overfishing. We need to have sustainable fisheries that can sustain and be more resilient to these changes um, that are uh, occurring. Um, so that's really here, I think the decisions being made at the COP here in Madrid uh, will actually determine the future of our oceans, whether there will be um, thriving marine biodiversity and oxygen-rich environment, or whether they will be damaged and irreversibly lost. So, so I think that has an impact. And then, as you said, as a, on a personal level, we, you know, we can engage, we can put public pressure, and we can um, make sure that we source sustainable, from sustainable sources.